And a very good afternoon to you all on this historic Wembley Day. The last FA Cup final of the 20th century. And fittingly, two of English football's most famous clubs are disputing this, the 71st final to be staged at this celebrated arena. Two Uniteds, Manchester and Newcastle, are no strangers here. Alex Ferguson's team, indeed, are contesting their fourth FA Cup final of the 90s. And hopefully, from wherever you are tuning in today, from all points of the globe, some 140 countries in all, hopefully, like all of us here at Wembley, you're beginning now to experience that surge of adrenaline, that tinge of anticipation that always accompanies this most prestigious occasion when English football throws open its doors and invites the world in to its end-of-season party. Rude Hullet there, a winner, of course, with Chelsea two years ago as a manager. A chance for his team to be party poopers. Manchester United on part two of their record-breaking assault on three major trophies. And Newcastle, so disappointing in last year's final. You don't need to remind Alan Shearer of that. They're thirsting to haunt United in their tracks and give their own fans a real day to remember. Just waiting now for the two teams to emerge from the tunnel. And they will tread out into blue skies over Wembley. The sun has been out. The old stadium awash with colour, alive with an ear splitting crescendo of sound as the teams prepare for the presentations. Alex Ferguson and Ruth Hullet leading the teams out. And I'm sure for the man alongside me here, a veteran of five FA Cup finals, most of us will settle for one, but he's been greedy five FA Cup finals. The memory of this moment, Frank Clements, I'm sure, still very fresh in your mind. Well, without a shadow of a doubt, yes, I mean, it's a tremendous feeling to walk out of that tunnel. Uh, different players react in different ways. Some are, are very much lifted by coming out of that tunnel. Some are probably a little bit uh, awestruck by it. And I wonder how Steve Harper behind Alan Shearer there, how he's actually feeling as he walks into this tremendous atmosphere. Fireworks gone off all around him. They're walking through the haze of the fireworks now, and I'm sure... He couldn't believe maybe three months ago that he would be in this situation. Well, nerves are so often a factor on days such as these. FA Cup history bears testimony to so many stories down the years of those who've frozen on the day and those who've risen gloriously, magnificently to the occasion. Just listen and look at this atmosphere here at Wembley today. It really takes some believing. Well, some observers have speculated that Manchester United minds rather than on today, might be more heavily focused on their final match of the season, the Champions League clash with Bayern Munich next Wednesday. But Alex Ferguson beaming smiles from him so far today, while admitting that that is the one he most wants to win now, insists that the historic treble is the target. And Newcastle can rest assured United's feet will be firmly on the pedal today, as Ferguson's team strive to become the first to achieve the double three times. As for Newcastle, well, the memory of last season's shame showing in defeat by Arsenal will surely serve to inspire them. Their lack of enterprise and adventure, their whole demeanour, I think, as much as anything else, stunned their passionate and devoted fans as much as the loss itself. And today, the players, those who featured in that game and those who didn't, will be straining every sinew, I'm sure, to provide a performance to be proud of. We seem to say it every year, Ray Clements, but this really is some atmosphere. Well, last year the uh, the Newcastle fans were, were outstanding. I mean, this year, <laughs> if it's possible, they seem even louder. I mean, not only, there's one of them not in a, in a black and white striped shirt. Uh, they've been around the city for a couple of days. They've been having atmosphere into the, into the city of London. And uh, the noise they, they generated as the two sides came out was absolutely incredible. They're showing the Newcastle side the sort of passion that they want from their team today. And uh, as you rightly say, I'm sure we'll see a vastly improved Newcastle side from the one that performed here last season. Well, 250,000 lined the streets of Newcastle to welcome them back as losers last year. How many, I wonder, will turn out should they win? The time now for the presentations of the teams to their Royal Highnesses. The Prince of Wales and the Duke and Duchess of Kent, and of course the national anthem.
as ever on this wonderful Wembley occasion. The last FA Cup final of the century. And hopefully we'll have a game to match. His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, meeting the two teams, Alan Shearer, leading him along the line. Such a proud day this for Shearer. A Geordie leading out a Geordie team. Robert Lee, of course, was captain last year. Shearer having now taken over the armband under Rule Hoodit. Hoodit himself looking pretty relaxed as ever, right? Well, I've never seen him anything else, to be honest. He's, uh, he's one of the most relaxed managers of the Premiership I've seen. Nothing seems to phase him. He can't uh, quite work out what the FA Cup is about, I don't think. Uh, that's, uh, no, I think, uh, I think certainly, you know, in Europe, uh, cup competitions are not classed with the importance of this one. Well, there'll be no shortage of commitment for this fellow, Roy Keane. One or two problems earlier in the week, a track car he was allegedly involved in it in the Manchester night spot after celebrating, while celebrating the championship win. And that's behind him for the moment anyway, as he introduces Prince Charles to the United team today. David back up there, he's bound to be a key man. And Phil Neville, who's come in for Dennis Irwin out through suspension. And what a moment there for Peter Schmeichel, your appraisal ray of a man who has served them so well down the years, but now is leaving the English scene. Well, it'll be a great loss to United, um, and I'm sure Alex Ferguson has been working probably for six months to try and find out who that replacement will be, because he has been a cornerstone. Whenever the, their back four has made an error, invariably Peter Schmeichel has bailed them out. And they're not going to have that next year, and uh, it's going to be difficult to find somebody with his stature, his experience, uh, to play in these big theatres every three or four days. Well, they are here today to savour every moment of the final. So disappointed last year, I think they felt let down by their team. Somehow I don't think that is going to be the case today, certainly in terms of performance, in terms of contribution from the Newcastle players. They are out to make amends. And so as the two teams break to their respective ends, Newcastle to our right, and their fans back behind that goal, Manchester United to the left. Let's take a check on the Wembley line. Starting with Manchester United, no Yap Stan or Henningberg because of injury, although Stan is among the substitutes. Dennis Irwin, as I was saying, of course, is out and suspended. In the shake-up, Ferguson pairs David May with Ronnie Johnson in central defence, with Phil Neville on the left, and up front starts with Andy Cole and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He has Dwight York and Teddy Sheringham, not a bad pairing in reserve on the bench. Keane and Paul Scholes, both banned from the Champions League final, were always certainties today, so does David Beckham. And Ryan Giggs also plays. We had wondered if he might have been held back for the European final. And no doubt, of course, over the choice in goal, Peter Schmeichel, his fourth and last FA Cup final. Ray, how do you see them lining up here? Well, we expect them to try and trust 4-4-2. Obviously, Keane and Scholes, vital in the middle of the field there, because that will be some battle. And it'll be a very interesting battle with Ryan Giggs and Andy Griffin, uh, the right back for Newcastle United. So I'm looking forward to that one. Let's look at Newcastle's side now. The big dilemma facing Rude Hillard, of course, was whether or not to gamble on Duncan Ferguson, who goes into hospital for a hernia operation on Monday. The answer, well, it's half and half, really. Not in the starting eleven, but on the bench, ready to be thrown on. Meantime, the German, Timothy Kitzbayer, begins as Alan Shearer's partner. The other question marks concern the uh, central defence. Laurent Chavez is fit to start there. This Ray is how they're going to form, form up. Well, again, it'll be a 4-4-2 situation. It'll be very interesting to see how Laurent Chauvet plays because he's very, very short of uh, match practice. And, of course, gets Bayer and Alan Shearer up the front. We know what Alan Shearer is capable of. Gets Bayer on his day is equally effective, but sometimes has off days. But if those two are on form, then certainly they'll test David May and Ronnie Janssen in the Man United central defense, defensive areas. Only five of that team, incidentally, started against Arsenal last year. Check on the subs today, the two benches. Certainly some quality there. A few bobs worth of talent waiting there, chance right. Well, there is. When you look at Man United substitutes, Teddy Sheringham and, uh, and, pe and people like that, you know, Dwight York. I mean, it's incredible the number of people who are actually there on the, on the subs bench. In fact, looking there, Dwight York wasn't among the subs. We thought he was going to be. Uh, he is, in fact. That's a, an error there on the caption. It will be Dwight York. I couldn't believe they'd have left him out of the 16. Today's referee is Peter Jones from Loughborough. He also took charge of last season's League Cup final here. He's officiated in the charity shield of well, so it's a trio of trouble for him. His two assistants, David Babsky and Phil Sharp, and the fourth official is Mike Riley. 
31 matches now since Manchester United were last beaten. Only three Premier League defeats all season. Their form has been simply awesome. In their three-pronged assault on the major honours. In contrast, Newcastle under Ruud Hullet have had really only the FA Cup on which to focus. And they won't take too much comfort from their run into the final. They won only one of the last ten and none since the semi-final win over Spurs. The form book sides with Manchester United, the league champions, but so often through the years this grand old competition has defied logic. Remember Wimbledon in 88, Sunderland in 73. The first ever FA Cup final between two Uniteds. And remember it has to be settled today. For the first time, there will be no replays. Alex Ferguson hoping there won't be even a need for extra time. But Ruud Hullet will have other ideas. And he will certainly have his tactics right. He hopes anyway in his mind. Hoping they can be relayed to the pitch, which is in perfect condition as ever. Looking absolutely immaculate. It was Solano, the Peruvian, the first Peruvian. Needless to say, I think, ever to play in an FA Cup final. Here he is now. Big following for him back home in his own country. Rob Lee with the first strike at goal. And then went Petspire. And a little too aggressively for the liking of referee Jones. But a bright start by Newcastle. Yes, they obviously set the stall out. They're going to go at United. They're not going to sit back. They're going to try and take the game to them. Started very positively and uh, showed the desire of Petspire there, bundling into the back of Ronnie Johnson. And uh, quite rightly, the referee giving a free kick. Uh, Already a ball change, obviously some of the United players not happy with that. Mr Jones has agreed with them and uh, we have a new ball very early, early in the game. They haven't scored with them, have they? <laughs> Rob Lee, who's won his place back at the Root Hooded, he's been out of favour for a while. The man who led them here last season. It goes Paul Scholes, a place in the heart of the midfield for him, alongside Roy Keane. Aggressive challenge on him there by Gary Speed. Speed and Hamann, the axis in midfield for Newcastle today. Safety through to Peter Schmeichel. Such a reliable last line of defence. Hard to believe he's going. There's the tackle on Keane. A signal there of Gary Speed's intent. Well, I think so, and uh, also, you know, Newcastle, Newcastle's enthusiasm to get on in this game. There was two players there challenged Paul Scholes, one being Deep Mahaman, and he certainly took a knock on his right-hand side there, I think actually up on the thigh area or the hip area, and uh, it looks quite painful at the moment, and I think he's actually going over towards the bench at the moment. The German international, Didi Haman, and a key figure, he has been during the cup run. Uh, Keane and Hobbit as well. He's in the that challenge from Gary Speed. Steve Harper with the kick blocked towards Alan Shearer. The ball for Solano. Schmeichel just for a moment then I thought he'd lost his grasp on it. Sweetly struck by Solano. Well, that's a good strike from Solano and uh, Peter Schmeichel, a bit unorthodox, doesn't catch it cleanly and uh, gets it in the second attempt. But Man United have got a big problem with Roy Keane at the moment. He's signaled to the bench that he's got a problem. It might be that ankle injury he had two or three weeks ago, but he is limping around very gingerly, and he's not the sort of player to uh, be pulling faces and limping if he isn't really hurt. Alex Ferguson has set three of the subs along the touchdown of the pass, and he's hit them off to go through their paces in case someone is needed early on here. Speed getting forward for Newcastle. the chance for Keane to receive some attention. Well, he's looking right now, Alex Ferguson. Keane, who is so essential to the United game plan. And how they're going to miss him in the Champions League final on Wednesday against Bayern Munich. But is he going to continue in this game? Well, Dwight York is on the bench today. So is Teddy Sheringham. Yep, Stan. Yes, but Brockquist, what do you feel there if Keane has to go off, right? Well, defensively, uh, 
know, Jonsson could come into the middle of the field and, and Stam could go at the back, but I'm sure he doesn't want to put him on this early in, in the game, so you, you might well look at uh, Blomqvist coming on, possibly bringing Giggs over to the right-hand side, moving Beckham into the middle and uh, letting Blomqvist play down that left-hand side, but uh, it looks like he's going to try and play on with it, but uh, he's certainly not looking happy. In some distress at the moment, Roy Keane playing in his fifth FA Cup final. He also featured a member for Nottingham Forest against Tottenham back in 91. Soldiering on for the moment anyway. He's got Griffith with the back pass. Griffith, who was man of the match at the semi-final win over Tottenham. Absolutely outstanding in curtailing the threat of David Ginola. Headed by Rob Lee down the Newcastle right. It goes Gary Neville. Giggs, Keane. Really is looking to run it off. Check off that injury. Neville now. And the pressure. From Deeper Hatman, who followed right through. And I think he's going to be in trouble here with referee Jones. He can it right into him then, Hatman. Yes, I mean, it's a, it's a silly tackle from behind there. He did catch Philip Neville. And as I say, United, uh, Newcastle United, their keenness to come at Manchester United. Um, they're getting stuck in and creating what well, havoc really in the United. They've clattered in, clattered into Philip Neville, clattered into Paul Scholes, and certainly clattered into Roy Keane, who for me, I don't think he can continue. Yellow card confirmed for Dietmar Hamann. Keane in obvious distress. It's for Blockquist. He get his chance earlier than you might have anticipated. Here's David Beckham. Hold off the Cole, who's offside. That Newcastle back line has squeezed up. And if he's ass in the centre, Domi on the left and Griffin on the right. And that will have more than a passing interest, of course, in the Champions League final. It's his former club, Manchester United, are taking on. Keane won't be there. Out through suspension. Is his season going to be over? Looking that way, sharing him another option on the bench. That was Shearer, out by David May. He's in for Jan Stam at the back. We're not a little surprised that Stam is featuring at all today. He's on the bench. Followed by an ankle problem. Now it's Giggs, racing away. Good anticipation then by Domi to thwart the threat of. Andy Cole, it's a different at the back end from Shabba, he's got away with it. I think Sheringham is going to come on for Keane any second now. And one would have to say, Greg uh, Clements alongside me here. You, you can't work me too pleased to see him go. Having said that, it was a bad tackle. Yes, it was, it was a poor tackle, but uh, you see, Newcastle has set the stall out and they're not giving United any time at all, and it has upset, upset uh, United's flow of play without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, it'll be very interesting when Teddy Sheringham comes on to see how they will then line up. I presume that, uh, that Solskjaer will go and play either on the right-hand side or go and play on the left-hand side of midfield where he has played before. Um, and then they can move Beckham into the centre of midfield with Scholes. But, uh, It'll be very interesting to see how they're going to adjust in the middle of the field the loss of who has been a key man throughout this season for them. It's a very sad sight for Manchester United fans as Roy Keane trips dejectedly off. On comes Teddy Sheringham. Instructions there for Ryan Giggs. his team would be committed, they have certainly been that. He feels they've been holding back, subconsciously or otherwise. Should go wide here. From Gunnar Solskjaer. Well, it appears that uh, what they are going to do is that Solskjaer is going to come and play on this right-hand side, releasing Beckham to go and play in the middle there with uh, with Paul Scholes. So, uh, it's just the one positional change there, but uh, you know, David Beckham is very, very comfortable in there, but United will miss his crossing ability from wide areas. Remember back in 95, they lost Steve Bruce injured early on, and of course they went on to lose the game against Everton. 
Ferguson played his part in that. Ferguson on the bench for Everton today. Keane taking no further part in the final. His season is over. I understand we're looking decidedly distraught. Up goes David May. Now Beckham. We pick two United. Put together this fantastic run. Having beaten now since back in December. Going for best of a third double. No one has ever done it before. Andy Cole, good play by him. Here's Sheringham. That was deeply dark too, and it scores. Starting it on to Sheringham! Oh, what an entrance from Teddy Sheringham! He's only been on the field a couple of minutes. And that is some impact. Well, Sheringham started it, Andy finished it, and it was a, a tremendous move. Uh, it actually went through Steve Harper's legs in the end as he came out, but I mean it was all Teddy Sheringham showed composure on the ball, always knew what he good play by Cole in the first touch. I'm not sure that was meant for Teddy Sheringham, but a wonderful touch. Ball lined up, and I'm not sure that Steve Harper really should have come there. But just watch here as a delightful ball from Paul Scholes. Harper comes through his legs. Um, I think Harper possibly just showed his inexperience rushing out there and the defender possibly might have dealt with it better. He is a player of such outstanding instinct and he has underlined that again. Teddy Sheringham on 11 minutes gives Manchester United the lead. Just when it seemed they were in serious trouble having lost their captain Roy Keane. Way by May, back up Newcastle now with catch fire. It's a pushing seat by the referee, by Hamad, who was really fired up for this game. Well, he needs to be careful, doesn't he, because uh, he's already been booked in the first few minutes. But look at this disguised pass by Paul Scholes. He looks like he's hitting it, slides it down the side, and there's the ball through Harper's legs. And uh, I just wonder if Harper had stayed somewhere around the six-yard line, he might have had a better opportunity of saving it. Absolute elation for Alex Ferguson. A oh, mixture of emotions down there on the bench for him. His captain having to go off, but the man who's replaced him coming on the score almost instantly. How can Shearer's team respond now? Sheringham, whose season has been blighted by injury, but he has been back in the frame lately. Played a big part in the semi final, of course, in the replay. And he was his prize choice along with Oliver Solskjaer. Helped to create the goal, I remember, for David Beckham. And Vicks, of course, with that sensational winner. Up goes Shearer. Ronnie Johnson had the measure of it, though. Well, he went to Manchester United. He says not just to win trophies, but now he has on it. His first, of course, the league championship. He's going to win another one today. As Ferguson's team bid for the historic treble. Part two today. The final installment to come in Barcelona on Wednesday night. Meantime, it's Lee for Newcastle. Oh. Shearer, with that ability to hold the ball up so well. He was clearly impeded there. There's some entrance from the former Tottenham man. Shepard Grove for Hullet's team. He says he's not too worried that they've lost a winning habit, but I do begin to wonder. Only one win in the last ten, remember, nothing since the semi-final. And they did play so well to come through against Tottenham. Here's Shade, who's only just back after injury. He's had six or seven weeks out. So it's touch and go as to whether he would play today. I think they need him at the back. His pace and his ability to read the game. He's on the ball now. The Frenchman Laurent Shade. To Solskjaer as it skipped off his head. Lore Kitzbayer. Last year, the first Georgian to play in an FA Cup final. The two Continentals in this match today again. United. Well, 
was a really tough assignment it was anyway for Newcastle even more so now now that they have suffered this early setback here's Phil Neville and up towards Andy Cole well, I think for his place might have been in jeopardy today on the defocus it might keep him back for Wednesday certainly that's the case for Dwight York I'm sure will start in the new camp Gary Speed now hit long towards Shearer Johnson blocking his path here's Robert Lee Kits by and then Griffin. Patient build up here from Newcastle. And Lee with a chance to cross it in. It's not a bad ball either. Shearer looking in the centre and with the predator. The referee is six of pushing. Well, Gary Neville does well here. Lovely ball down the side, and Gary Neville doesn't let Alan Shearer look at him, just stop him getting a jump there, stops him from getting a run. Alan Shearer then has to climb all over him. This is the goal again. That's a wonderful disguised pass for Teddy Sheridan to strike. So much to admire on the goal. The vision of Scholes, the finishing of Sheringham, who was it from the start on the move. Gone. 15, but it's gone. And the early edge lies with Manchester United. Gary Neville, four options in the centre. We're in the red of United. There's Giggs. Well, I've to back up. It's Ryan Giggs again. He's got the ball in play. And again, fine anticipation from Chave at the back for Newcastle. Beckham. Well, by Solskjaer, a little tentatively, though. Here's Beckham again. Defense tackle, his firm, his positive, and it was legal. That one wasn't from Beckham. Three Jones just wanting a quiet word with the England man. Uh, I think that was a tackle to uh, that was a tackle because of Griffin's tackle on Ryan Giggs. I think David Beckham thought, right, I'll give one back here. Here's Neville. Again underlining his versatility today. He can play in so many positions. He may well find himself in central midfield in Barcelona. No Keane, no Scholes. Might be a roll for him there. Not by speed. Now it's that man. He's deadly from long range. United kept the door shut though, and firmly so. And goes Solskjaer, that was late. Nichols man riding on the ground. Harry Speed, fellow who has profited so much on the route, it? This game really has taken off this season. They took off there, but all the way to the challenge from Oligona Solcha. Well, we've seen him out and strike some wonderful shots from this this sort of distance throughout the season. It's a big game for him and a big moment for him now to try and get his teammates back in it. Solano alongside the Peruvian. Here is Solano. He's hit it well. Not quite well enough. Remember Diego Maradona was always praising Solano when he went back to Boca Juniors for a while. The training Maradona he was calling him a little maestro from free kicks. Well, Schmeichel always had that call, but I think he was very, very calm, walked across as though he was just waving to somebody on a shopping trip. It wasn't that far away, was it? I think it's about 9 o'clock in the morning back in Peru, and I gather everyone there is up watching the final. Solano has made a decent impression since coming to St James's Park. He's made himself a third favourite for the fans, too. Goals walking hard in the midfield, he was just clipped there. And now continuing to live dangerously. He is the man you feel who can inspire Newcastle. They are to cut back here. Hicks going up. He's again to whip it across just beyond Andy Cole. Here's Solano.
Paul Scholes in the way. Scholes, of course, got a hat trick on his last appearance here for England against Poland. Here with England, Kent McVeigh Ray, and there's some performance from Scholes. Well, it certainly was, but it was just like another day at the office with, with Paul Scholes. You know, nothing seems to phase him. He scored a hat trick in an England game and he was going home with a ball, and he looks almost embarrassed by it. And that's the sort of lad he is. He's a tremendous player, and uh, you know, in a situation like they're in at the moment, Man United, you need people who can control their emotions, and certainly Scholes is one of those. Xavi, into that ball, not given by referee Jones. Johnson then to pump it forward again for United. It's Haman, Scholes, puts Feldes to Ferguson's team, threatening to add to their early advantage. It's Ryan Giggs, Neville rocking away down that left side. It's not to be collected in the end by Harper. He's come through the back end of the season to claim his place in goal ahead of Shea Given. Come from nowhere, really. Five years or so at the club. It's the first time he's had any kind of run in the team. And he's in on merit, too. Make no mistake about that. Sheringham, an early substitute and an early scorer in this FA Cup final. And to be fair to the United, any quality move they put together, Teddy Sheringham invariably has instigated it. He's the one who's getting his foot on the ball and bringing players into the game, whereas uh, still some of the United players, they're still hurrying and scurrying and the ball's not being played as they used to. But certainly Teddy, he's got that confidence. Give me it, I'll hold on to it and will build from me. Scholes will be so keen to make his mark today and that he will miss out on the Champions League final. Decker will certainly be there. It's Giggs now. After sharing up, such an intelligent player, Teddy Sheringham. He's taken, his, taken a while really to win over the United fans. So many problems with injuries earlier in the season. Back with a vengeance now. Giggs, wonderful control, not so the delivery. Andy Cole looking to attack the cross in the centre. Solskjaer, 17 goals this season, from only 16 starts. Quite a few as a substitute, of course, including four in one match against Nottingham Forest. And one eight one away from home. And a man to bring on bring into this game as Ferguson has right from the start Domi French under 21 international Neville staying with him he's such an odd group defender Gary Neville Did well then to repel the threat of Didier Domi came from Paris Saint-Germain who comes from the same youth set up as Anelka down at Arsenal but Domi rather happy with his surroundings up in Newcastle than Anelka seems to be in London. Andy Cole unchallenged. He certainly was. Another thunderous tackle from Griffith. He it doesn't hold back this young fellow. Well, it's one of those situations where he's gone in to try and make his presence known on Ryan Giggs and has finished up getting his own nose blooded <laughs> with uh, Ryan Giggs falling on him quite heavily. I saw a fair bit of Griffin when he was at Stoke. Played mainly on the left then, almost exclusively indeed on the left, but in it right back at this current Newcastle side. As I mentioned earlier, he a really accomplished job snuffing out the third of Ginola. And Hullet will be hoping for much the same today against Ryan Giggs. been okay Beckham and Giggs organizing this free kick four matches to United Johnson is up for the back May as well sharing up so nearly make contact there and the marking was not too clever you would have to say from Newcastle well that will go down and Mark book a chance again for Teddy just watch the space he runs a big hole there and Teddy's in there maybe just over his head he's reached in a little bit too much and you'd be worried that he gets that sort of freedom there. Nobody's marking closely, and if he gets his head on it, there's a possible second goal. But my hammer is back up for United. Now Andy Cole, Solskjaer. Solskjaer 
Shire. We gather in talks with Alec Ferguson about his future. Not too happy at the lack of playing action in terms of starting matches. But of course, Ferguson has assured him he has a big part to play. Actually, with so many matches in the Champions League next season. Cole is offside here. So quick out of blocks, Andy Cole. No easy task for the referee's assistant, but the flag was clearly raised. To the relief of Steve Harper in that Newcastle goal. Have you seen much of Harper, Ray? Yes, I have, yeah, and I've uh, liked what I've seen. I was uh, a little bit... Uh, I'm not exactly convinced he made the right decision, but the first goal, we certainly made the right decision there, coming out, taking ball and uh, dumping Andy Cole on his bum as well. But, uh, you know, it, obviously it's just that experience and, uh, you know, your first appearance at Wembley had nothing to do, really, until that, that goal situation arrived and it was his first major decision and maybe he would look back and think he would deal with it differently later in his career or even later in this game. Well, his future career is now with Newcastle. He's just agreed a new three-year contract. That was Scholes. David May, relishing his opportunity at the starting 11. He didn't begin enough matches to win a medal in terms of the championship. Come out, showing commendable aggression. On the catch by, just couldn't take it in his stride though. And it enabled Ronnie Johnson to mop up at the back for United. Well, it's again delightful ball from a man, and if Kitspire can sort his feet out, he's got a goal-scoring opportunity, and he also had Solano giving him support. I'm not sure about United's marking then either. Here's Domi now to Solano, trying to thread it on to Simone Kitspire. He's always lively, always vibrant, whatever role he plays for Newcastle. Today he's up front at Tanda with Shearer. Griffin's cross, stopped it by May. Dicks, sweeping it on, there's only Cole uphill. Easily intercepted by Chave. Now Abizas. Well, hasn't been as consistent this season as it was in the last campaign. He's quick, he's very strong. And he has formed a good partnership with Chave when they've been together. Griffin. He's keeping one button out of the team at the moment. This is Doomy on the other side. That was one other option. Open to Hulu to include the more defensively aware part, perhaps in place of Solano. Here are penalised. And there's two goals against Tottenham. No, not this place in the final. Tanking here with Ronnie Johnson. It's going to be quite a contest between the two. Johnson is no slouch at the back. Sharingham is the target. Passing with Cabezas, up goes Cole with Chave. Cole's kept it in too. And Harper had to be alert and have his wits about him. As Cole hooked it back. He's actually a shade given look-alike, isn't it? to choose between the two when you look out from here. Taller, Steve Harper, and he does tend to command his penalty box a little more. So as Ray was saying, he uh, might have a look at himself on the goal scored by Sheringham. And if Ray Clements says he was suspect, then I'll go along with that. There's more about goal giving than me. Don't you? Um, I would hope so. Hopefully. Castle's free kick. The bright sunshine of Wembley. And they had a bright start. But United have had the breakthrough. Thanks to Terry Sheringham. Oh, as a substitute for the injured Roy Keane. Chave. Right here to Domi. Now speed. In the engine room for Newcastle. Seeking out Shearer, but he's offside. He just pulled away then from Neville. You do worry yet again with this Newcastle side, as last year and as at times during the season. There we see Alan Shearer in offside position, but uh, it's where they're going to get the crosses in the last third of the field, and that's what Alan Shearer needs. Uh, when you're knocking them in from around the halfway line, you're giving him no chance whatsoever. You've got to get into that last third of the field in wide areas. Then he'll cause a big problem for United. But at the moment, Newcastle haven't managed to do that. 
They're certainly battling. They're certainly competitive. Shearer has had his critics this season. He has scored 21 goals and three more for England. He says, hang on a moment, that's all Andy Cole's got. But of course, he's set such high standards for himself, Shearer. And any hint that he might be falling below those standards and his critics are out in force. Most of the time without justification. Kick here to Manchester United. Frustration for Ketspire, who will be mighty relieved to be playing today. Seeing Ferguson in reserve and waiting for his chance. Ketspire himself rather unhappy that he doesn't play too often, or often enough for his liking anyway. He says, if you're not going to pick me, I'll be off. Not the first footballer to say that. Here's Solskjaer. Dunlin to showing up an intelligent layoff. It's Beckham to fire it just wide. So dangerous from long range, David Beckham. Well, he is, and he's a, he's a good goal scoring form at the moment. You know, he fancies his chances here. He sees the space, just cuts across the top of the ball, doesn't connect with it uh, cleanly. But give him too many of those chances, and he'll get them on target. Don't worry about that. The man who sparked the revival, of course, last weekend against Tottenham. And Manchester United, the goal down. Came back to pitch the title. Their fifth in seven years. And they're bidding here to win the FA Cup for the fourth time in the 90s. It's a phenomenal record. Now by Johnson on Shearer. France without complaint into the middle. We're joined by Chave, Dabi Zass. Both useful in the air. speed as well it's called in and get over the top by speed rather off balance it's got his quota of goals down the years carry speed a disciplined player these days under Hullet and this goes straight in the penalty box makes those timely surges through from midfield. Just there, as I was saying, they're more disciplined these days and when he makes them. Scholes on the sharing of his pounce of space to in anticipation by Dobie. And now jumping Ola Gona Solskjaer. He'll be jumping up a bit to impress up front and then being given his opportunity today. Reference to Dwight York. Walker Cole has been the first choice combination, of course, for most of the season. 53 goals between them. Will they be reunited, I wonder, later in the match? By Chave, it's Beckham. Now that to Gary Neville. The pick off was from Shearing out, oh, from the Solskjaer, rather. More danger then for Newcastle. Giggs. Sharing up, trying to hook it across. Finally away, but only as far as David Beckham. Solskjaer, Cole! Is this going to be another one? Oh, hooked away! From almost under the crossbar. And he's asked to the rescue, I think he's hurt himself in the process. So nearly another goal for United. Beckham. They buy it now. Alex Ferguson's team, one up and looking for more. Certainly not sitting on this lead. But Ketsbyer now breaking for Newcastle. He's got Solano in support, still Ketsbyer. Shearer at his far post, goes Haman. Timely block on him, speed then over the bar. That was an important challenge by Ronnie Johnson. Well, he quickly put pressure on to Haman there, didn't he? But it's it was the other end of the field, that Solskjaer there, he had a marvellous chance, delightful ball from Beckham out here, and Gary Neville picks out Solskjaer, see him free at the near post, that's a golden opportunity, it really was, look at him holding his head, he knows, but that was a, a really golden opportunity, and here all of a sudden, Steve Harper coming again, and Andy Cole doesn't quite make good contact with it, otherwise it would be 2-0. on by Griffith, to Robert Lee. 
That was a great ball, very nearly anyway. Janssen just stood his ground in the nick of time there against Shearer. If not, the England captain would have been on his way. Griffin. Speed then to take it on. This is Didier Dobie. Gives Newcastle a good taste down the left side, but he does get forward. It's fire after this one. May was there, though. Then Neville, some excellent work. Coming off for Solano, then speed. He did catch him. Neville with the free kick. Sharing up right up front, alongside Cole. Solskjaer dropping off. It goes Cole now. A little ball for Robert Lee. Ten minutes of the first half to go. Kespire had shown to Lee up front. Griffin. Neville with a foot in. Rupert standing just a few yards back from the touchline. Hands in pockets as ever. It seems to phase by it all. I'm sure he'll be hoping to spot uh, his team's recovery. Come the second half. Got one by the net. United leading by a goal to nil. And here's gets by now for Newcastle. Didier Domi. It's fire again. He's got Hamad to his right. This is Hamad. Away from Skulls. Still deep by Hamad. Great stop by Schmeichel. And squirmed away from him. Too hot to handle. Well, that's the danger to Manchester United when deep by Hamad is in that kind of striking position. Well, he is. He works the move very well himself. Strikes it well. And that's a very, very good save by Schmeichel. Difficult position to get down to. Got his both hands down there. Directed it out for a corner. But Hamad there. Made that for himself and uh, tested Schmeichel for the first time in the game. Catch fire. Back hit by Lee. Johnson coming out on top. Against Abizas. Jeffrey Jones seeing nothing wrong there. No real protest in fairness from Abizas. Clumsy, but nothing up toward really from Ronnie Johnson. Good play by Cole. He's worked it on now to Scholes. Gritz played on the left side for a moment. He's back up here, dispossessed though. And the urgency of Gary Speed, it's Hamad now. Sneak it on to Ketsbyer. Beckett's challenge. Now the referee has to for the free kick. It's been fiercely contested so far. The 118th FA Cup final. Going Manchester United's way at the moment. But Newcastle here coming back. Schmeichel forced into that splendid save from Hamad. We're going to be looking to test them again now. Solano is there as well. This is Hamad. Not this time. He has made a big impact with Newcastle this season. The German international took a while to settle on half time side. Uh, strikes it with lots of power, but it was always going wide. Alan Shearer with an outstretched foot trying to get a touch on it to direct it back towards Michael's goal. But uh, by, uh, by Hamad's uh, standards, that was really a disappointing one. Castle playing in the 13th final. The winners on six previous occasions. Sure. Ideally, he would love to hold that trophy aloft at the end of today's final. It means so much to him as a Geordie. Manchester United fans, of course, have never forgiven him for choosing Newcastle ahead of their team. Neville's cross, great one, two for Sterling. Fabulous ball in, and sharing up with that darting header on the end of the cross. You can see, look at Gary Neville saying, this is coming to you, Teddy. Come towards that near post, exactly what Teddy does. Just can't direct it. 
but it's a wonderful ball in by Gary Neville and there's loads of power from Teddy Sheringham just can't get it onto the target. But these balls when they get played into the box are giving Newcastle problems. Well, the difference is, is that certainly in Gary Neville's case, he's getting down into that last third of the field and supplying quality balls in from there. Unfortunately, in Newcastle's case, they're not getting into those areas to get the balls in. Kicks to Cole. Neat slick into passing here from Manchester United. Off goes Phil Neville. Now Kicks. Bending over his cross. It's too long, though, over hit. Randy Cole. Solano can collect now for Newcastle. He had only 11 wins in the Premier League last season. Very erratic captain. And obviously say the best performances for the FA Cup. As they did last year. Shearer now caught offside. Linked with Manchester United, of course, before his move to Newcastle from Blackburn. He turned them down in favour of his hometown club. Chance to link up with Kevin Keegan as well. A chance to win trophies. And Newcastle have had their opportunities, that's for sure. Neville. It's a foul by Cole Otley. Prodigiously up front, though, Andy Cole. Well, it was, he would have been really disappointed if he left out today, even if uh, he was down to start on Wednesday. Ferguson, the gather nearly made it. He has his groin operation coming up on Monday, and well, it must have been tempted to put him in from the start. He'll certainly be tempted to put him on late on, right? Well, I'm sure if it carries on like this into the last 20 minutes of the game, that we'll see him because uh, I'm sure that although he's having an operation on Monday, that he can manage 20 minutes at least and uh, have an influence on this game. Beckham. Now they Again, good anticipation from the French, but... He was with Chelsea at the back end of last season in the League Cup final. Didn't feature, though. Moving on then to Newcastle. Kenny Dalglish had been impressed by him when he played at centre-back for Chelsea, a fairly rare occasion that he had performed in that position. He was more often than not a wing-back during his time at Stamford Bridge. It's been a relatively brief one. Mark with you through to Harper. Beaten by Teddy Sheringham's goal on 11 minutes, the 250th, incidentally, of Sheringham's career. What drama here. Keane having to go off, Sheringham replacing him, and scoring almost immediately. The delight of the Manchester United fans here in this magnificent atmosphere. Red and white to my left, black and white to my right. It's all making for a fabulous occasion. Well, I'm sure many a twist or turn to come in this game yet. Off goes Cole. And he's out striding out with him. The company. Shearer's the target. Should be Johnson's ball though. And Neville put under pressure. And the energy of Robert Lee. Robert Lee's last chance of an honour with Newcastle. He's been with them since the early 90s, of course. Such a favourite up on Tyneside. Really flourished up to Kevin Keegan. Not so in the early days of Huddett. Back in favour now. Sharing it. Well, on the same bank leg goes Andy Cole. Game just going off the boil a little at the moment, Ray. Yes, it has. I mean, we're not far away from half time now, a minute or so away from half time, and certainly. Uh, there's been some good football in this first half. Man United have played the most of it, to be fair. Uh, Newcastle have had little five-minute spells, but uh, 
overall the difference is that you know United are putting more passes together whereas Newcastle are battling so hard to win the ball but when they win it they give it away cheaply and can't get uh, the consistent pressure onto the United back four their approach has certainly been tenacious so far Newcastle just need a bit more quality going forward and they do advance not really unsettled Manchester United too often United will be hoping fatigue doesn't set in that's why Alex Ferguson utilises his resources so often switches players around brings others in giving as many fresh as possible one more big game to come and what a game too that Champions League final against Bayern Munich in Barcelona United having cut through two monumental clashes in the Italian clubs Inter and Juventus to earn their place in the final his call now away from Davizas Chalet was there with a dreadful clearance, it's Cole now. Might go for goal, Andy Cole. There was no sting in the shot. Signing there to go it alone. Well, again, Steve Harford not catching the ball correctly, and it opens up here for Andy Cole. But on his weaker left foot, there doesn't really strike it. This is going to cause Harper a problem. It's back up now. No question about his desire today. Pulled out though by Solano, then Domi trying to thread it back to Solano. Neville is there to tidy up for United. Their 15th FA Cup final. It is a record nine occasions. Is it going to be ten today? Are they going into double figures? Solano. It's just a stumble that puck gets by, no more than that. And Philip Neville. Happy to settle for the goal kick. Not too sure what sort of boots Sketch Fire has got on here today because every time the ball's come around him, he seems to be falling over, slipping over, stumbling over. Uh, because to be fair, he's had two or three little openings if he could have sorted his feet out, and we know he's capable of it. But uh, if he could have sorted his feet out, they could have caused United some damage. And his enthusiasm in this first half, like all the Newcastle players, have been relentless really, but they will go in a goal down. Thanks to the strike from Teddy Sheringham, was beautifully created, beautifully taken. Only a couple of minutes after he had been replaced, or yet replaced, Roy Keane, who now lifts away to the dressing rooms. Pull it for the task of reigniting his team's challenge in the second half. This is why Keane was unable to continue. It was Gary Speed who caught him. On came Sheringham, and what an impact he was to make. Scores with that wonderful pass through and showing up to drive it in. Euphoria for Alex Ferguson, Manchester United getting the early lead they wanted. Unable to build on it, but all their attractive football. Newcastle have had their moments too, and it's all set up for the second half here. In the FA Cup final, the last of the 20th century, Manchester United are leading Newcastle United by a goal to nil. He's on for the second half, and no question, no comments alongside me here. They have to try something, change something, and he just might be the answer. Well, certainly, uh, they'll give them something different, but certainly the way they've been playing the first half, because they've uh, been playing balls up to, up to Alan Shearer with no hope for him and to deal with it. Well, the problem that uh, they've got is that although Ferguson has come on, which would be a bonus for him, he's replaced her man. Now, I think that's from a knock that he got very early in the game. And her man really has been the one person in the midfield who's looked like he might be able to break from there. We saw him make an excellent uh, shot, which Michael had to make a, a very, very good save from towards the end of the first half. So they've gained something, and I think they've lost something as well. Manchester United taking the run to them. It's really now starting the second half. Looks a bit case fire. Slotted into midfield. Face located by her man. And I'm sure he will be told to advance at every opportunity in support of Ferguson and Shearer. Ferguson, who has hardly played in the last few weeks, of course, but he came on to help change the course of the semi-final. 
so it's a prospect for Manchester United to face the threat in the air of Duncan Ferguson. Signed for £8 million pounds earlier in the season. Steven Ferguson, two former Everton men. Catch fire, yes, he's slotting it alongside Gary Speed. Uh, what they'll try and do, they'll try and chuck uh, Solano in alongside Gary Speed and Robert Lee and just give Ketspire a little bit of freedom to break from that middle of the field to join the front two. And they've certainly got to show adventure. Ferguson trying to knock it on in search of Shearer. That'll be the game plan. Shearer needs the service to thrive on. such a handful of his in form but what we don't know of course is how serious his injury is I think the operation he's going in for is only a, a tiny enough operation as such how much will he, his mobility be restricted I wonder here well I wouldn't have thought they'd have risked him on the bench if they weren't confident he could play at least half an hour uh, because to have him on the bench if he couldn't play at least that really seems a waste of time so he's not able to play a lot more than that so I'm, I'm pretty confident that he will get through it Maybe more if it goes to extra time. Remember, there are no replays this year. Extra time, and if needed, a penalty shootout. Except work out by Lee. Releasing Kets Bayer. This is promising now for Newcastle. Kets Bayer. The goal, but not extending to this either in any way. A measure of the size of Newcastle's task. Manchester United have lost only five times in 61 games this season. These Newcastle fans have come here in their walls today. At least expecting a better show than last season. That wouldn't be too difficult. Remember, for much of the game, they were shouting attack, attack, attack. And not too happy with the way the team had approached the match. No, well, certainly uh, they can't fault Newcastle's commitment and passion in this game. Maybe they've overcommitted at times, and that's uh, you know, why there's been one or two or knocks and bruises. But they can't fault that, that's a certainty. What they can fault in the first half is that there wasn't enough quality shown in, in certain areas to actually open up United. And they need more guile, they need more invention. What we do have now is a battering ground up front in the shape of Ferguson. And we're looking to reach this cross here. Those devil. Focus a tall, angular figure. He might get a skip of this one. Hope has got a piece of it. The referee has ruled against it. And I think Ray's his mere arrival, his entrance in the second half has lifted. You can't see morale certainly on the terraces. Well, you see he got a free header there in the first place, which nobody was about to challenge him. And the ball's not there, you just see him give David May a little knock there, which allowed him to break through it. Smeichel had it covered, but just the sheer presence, you know, when you're playing against something like that, you know a high percentage of the balls you're not going to win, and you've got to deal with the second balls, and that's certainly what United will be trying to do, and also not to get pinned back in and around the 18-yard area, where if he wins any headers there, it could be costly. There's a big, big physical presence, Duncan Ferguson. Speed, tiny on to grip it. Off a challenge of Andy Cole, the former Newcastle man. So popular, but of course, up on the right side. And his 68 goals, Cole, in just 84 appearances for Newcastle. It was Toby giving it away. Didn't care to shoot a tackle. Frank is aggression in the tackle. Now it's Cole. Trying to spin away from Chave. Good block there by the Frenchman. It goes, gets fired. A terrific start to the second half. So sharp. Showing up whose goal divides the two teams. Griffin. Newcastle fans who are raising their voices at the moment around Bentley. Dix. Cole slipping past Chave. Showing him through the tackle. So is So sharp. Still Andy Cole. Just a clearance set by Dabby Zass, the Greek international. Here's Gary Speed. Derby making a run down the far side. Solano with some slotty control. But now it is Solano. Taking up 
Fantastic flowing again, Solano. And the castle don't mind to be posing at the dressing room if they win. Well, Spiker's going mad there because uh, he felt he could deal with that ball, the initial ball, and Philip now the put his foot on it, caused Spiker a problem. That's a couple of times now there's been a lack of communication between Philip and Spiker. Play by David May. He has his work cut out now. That's the totemic figure of Duncan Ferguson. Future too often in the Premier League team. Getting his chance today in the absence of Yapster. This is Kets Fire for Newcastle. Division two now. Gomi needs a quality ball in here. Ferguson is waiting near post. Gomi has forced a corner. It could have been more serious though for Manchester United, but he managed to supply the cross. They are visibly lifted now, those Newcastle fans. The arrival of Ferguson will be the catalyst for a revival. Neville to head it away. Manchester United on the back foot for the moment. He's lost only five of 52 FA Cup ties in the 90s. Tremendous record down the years. No handball. 2,000 Jordies thought otherwise. Domi won the French Cup last season with Paris Saint-Germain. Shearer almost worked it in then to Ferguson. There was a new zest about Newcastle now. The attempt to ask why they didn't start with Ferguson, but he isn't fully fit, remember that. Here's Giggs now looking to show his acceleration. But that is Astros, quick to his defensive metal. Not the best appearances though. Put his teammates in trouble and sharing up the scores! An aberration by Dabizas and it's gifted a second goal to United. Scores! The master goal poacher strikes again. Well, it was just as, it, as Newcastle started to take a little bit of control, but it's terrible play from Dabizas there. And then it's a wonderful layoff yet again by Teddy Sheringham. And how many times have we seen? Paul Scholl score goals from, from that sort of area. Bags of space, keeps it low, drills it past half, but gives him no real chance. But it was in the corner where the mistake was made. It was a ball really, there was no problem whatsoever. Davidas could have played it to safety and they could have got reorganised. But he played the ball back into midfield, and there we see the fight of what happened from the end of it. The alertness of Solskjaer, the intelligence of showing up at the clinical finishing of Paul Scholl's, 2-0, Manchester United. Ten goals, shot goals during the campaign. Another one now, and maybe it's put this cup final beyond the reach of Newcastle United. It's a real picture of goals. And that one was beautifully struck. United with an injury at the moment. Solskjaer did well then to nip it. Sheringham just laying it off so tidily. And Scholes pumping it in past Steve Harper. Sheringham played his part, scored the first. He's laid on the second. And United are very much in the driving seat. Beckham in the wars here. That's what it seemed to go. Newcastle were pouring their way back. Showing signs that they could hit make a match of this. Well, maybe they still can. But Paul Scholes has made it very difficult for them now. Yes, it was amazing, really, because uh, you know, Newcastle started so positively. They looked one or two thoughts of a bit of panic in the United defence. Ferguson was getting his head on, on things. And it just looked as though maybe Newcastle could get into, into it. But one bit of thoughtlessness by Davizaz. And United pounced, and, uh, and what a killer blow it was from Scholes. It's going to be really hard going now for Newcastle. Beckham is OK. Philip looks on. Philip's going to sit hoping for a record for if any top men as a manager. They are certainly on the right road now. Chalet with a free kick for Newcastle. Unfortunately, neither a goal to raise their spirits. 
Here comes Cole for Manchester United. Now right kicks. Steve Harper had read the situation quite well, but if it had been played wider, then he would have had a problem. Dix, who may well be heading for his 14th major trophy in a Manchester United shirt. Schmeichel will call the park to clear. Not calling the park for that but he's saved so far. And you can see that Dwight York is going to come off now. Sliding down from Trinidad and Tobago. The first from that country to play the FA Cup final. I'm sure he'll have a big following back home. And the time he has played in Manchester United's magnificent season is 29 goals. Griffith to lead. Shearer looking to attack. Gets by away from Smuggle. Oh, what a correction! David Bay. To deny Kets Pryor a goal. I'm sure they would have played much lighter than Newcastle. Hicks. Now Lee. Well, this will protect half of that Newcastle coming so close. Through the Georgia Timore Kets Pryor. Here's Derby. Ferguson so moving fairly freely. Deck up. Well weighted pass, Coles after it. Sunday up nerve. Too sure that didn't hit the post. Now it did, it, yeah, uh, May was beaten, but it just hit the outside of the post there. But Schmeichel unfortunately flapped at the ball to start off with, which gave Kitspire the opportunity. And really, he should have definitely hit the target, shouldn't he? Oh, he did hit the frame of the goal, and he didn't get his foot to it. So unlucky, Kitspire. Hicks trying to take off the ever enthusiastic Kitspire. Breaking for United. He's has it well. Back to the centre. Solano. Moving up front from Shearer and from Ferguson. Which is Andrew Griffith. Now Lee. And he looked to service Ferguson. That way he went. By David May. Right, 
Well, he has, and he'll be so pleased to be on the pitch, it's a certainty. I mean, it's, uh, I would imagine that that's the first sign of Ferguson, Alex Ferguson looking at Wednesday night now. Doesn't want anything to happen to Andy Cole. Give Dwight York a little run out and uh, let him be part of what's another marvellous occasion, it seems, for United. Be back and took Cole off and bring on Dwight York. Well, when you think of the options, now that uh, Dwight York, Solskjaer, Sheridan, Giggs, Coles, Beckham, all so capable of scoring goals, and that's a, that's a wonderful option for Alex Ferguson. Yeah, scored goals in such a resistible fashion all season. Solskjaer, the reflection. And 
amazing escape for Steve Harper in that Newcastle goal. And they are being pounded now by Manchester United. Well, they are, and this, uh, you know, it's one chance after another. Solskjaer just can't control it right. His first touch doesn't take it where he wants it. And then Steve Harper spills it, and they're getting an awful mess, and they nearly let it roll into the net. I mean, at the moment, unfortunately, Newcastle are all over the show in every part of the field. And, uh, United are having an absolute field there at the moment. Solano failing to keep the ball in play. And Newcastle at the moment can't get a sniff of this. The champagne football for Manchester United. The league champions going for the double. Going for the treble indeed. At this stage, you'd have to say very much on the cards. Certainly the double. Very hard night ahead of them against Bayern Munich in the Champions League final. One step at a time. Well, that's right. They achieved this, and uh, you know, it's what 66 minutes gone. They've got themselves into a winning position where really they don't have to keep their foot on the pedal. They can keep control of the game without going flat out, and that will be good for them with the European Champions final coming up. And uh, you know, I would imagine Bayern Munich were hoping they'd get taken right to the wire and possibly to extra time, but. Uh, the way it's going at the moment, I can only see United adding to their lead. Which they are trying to do now. Solskjaer. Boxed by Domi. Sharing up chest to get down. And they didn't it. And deprive United of another goal scoring opportunity. That goes Kets by. Solano. Now Griffin. Bearing down on goal, still Andrew Griffin. That's not a bad effort. Again, a bit of trouble with his cycle. And Newcastle are going to make another change. It's Barrich who will be coming on. This is Solano. He's got to try something now. chance, I mean, again, the ball's played Ferguson, a good touch, you, when you get these opportunities against United, you need to hit the target and try and test Michael, and Kespire has had two golden opportunities, one particularly when the, uh, Michael spilled the ball, he had to hit the target then when he hit the post, and of course there we see a more difficult chance, but one that you've got to test the people, because United don't give you that many chances. United heading for yet another double, third of the 90s, of course, in English football, fourth in five years with Arsenal's prime classes. Ferguson. Sloppy touch though, but the entire pass then from the Newcastle veteran. Newcastle, who won a major trophy for 30 years, the old Fairs Cup, their last try, back in 69. Goals. Walk darting ahead of it. Evidence caught down the right. Scholes. Has that ability to draw off and find space. Now it's Ryan Giggs. Back in towards Sheringham. He almost managed to nudge it on and he has forced the corner. With 20 minutes to go. Given. Despite the efforts there of Harper on his goal line. Beck 
Scott will swing this one over. And Newcastle will survive, but Ronnie Johnson. His face tells the story. Look, he's free in that near post area. Can't get it down on target. But uh, again, slap mark in the Newcastle defence allows a red shirt to go to the, to the end of a crossing situation. And he knows, well, we all know by the face he pulled, he felt he could have done better. And we become the third Norwegian to win the FA Cup final. Frode Gronas of Chelsea was one. Who was the other, right? I think it you. might have been Eric Tosford. Alan Shearer looking to revive his feet to it. He hasn't even got the corner. Not his day. Well, it's the linesman that's given the decision, and he's a lot closer than anybody. Well, to me, that's a corner. <laughs> he didn't concur with that opinion. Who said he felt so hurt, so great. He saw Tony Adams collect the cup last season for Arsenal. At the moment, he's not going to be feeling any happier at the end of this match. Neville. Back to retreat against Tamani Fitzbarr. Well, we can 
captain, of course, in Barcelona on Wednesday. And Roy Keane missing for that one as well. That's Beckham. Solskjaer is rough. There we are. Just about to see it. It says captain. Must be the one. I'll still be surprised though at the end of the game because Michael will be captain in Barcelona that uh, you know, Roy Keane doesn't limp up those stairs and pick up the trophy. Will. I think he will. You try stopping him. Did you wear the captain's arm on occasions? Yes, I was very lucky to uh, not only captain the clubs, but I managed to captain England on one occasion here against Brazil, so uh, special occasions. Back up now. Racing forward for United. To a nick. It could have been a costly one. In the corner. And it's back up for... Now United are going to make a substitution. The next time it's going to come on. The face of Paul Scholes. What a reception he'll get. Score on that second goal. So hopefully... Uh, Point of view, that's a sign that Yapstan isn't too seriously injured. There's a cool stopping problem. The season he's had from United. It's kicks. Made by Ferguson. Alan Shearer. It's by Nick Lapp, though, with Kamori gets fired. Well, Ronnie Johnson just move into the middle of the field there and just secure the win, really. That's obviously what Alex Ferguson is happy to do now. They've got themselves into that winning position. Do nothing silly and hit them on the break like this. Gicks. Can't go all the way through, still Gicks. Shagger! Oh! Such quick thinking. And he clipped the top of the crossbar. Well, that was delightful, wasn't it? I mean, Gibbs wins it, they're on the break, he waits his time, waits his time, thinks about a shot, lays it to Sheringham, and look at that thing. Steve Harper, no chance whatsoever. So unlucky, it's just like ending in the back of the net. Well, so much is made of his lack of pace, but he has so many other attributes. In time, Newcastle, with another substitution. Stephen Glass is on. Player. Not making no impression this time. United in command. Thanks to the goals from sharing up and from Scholes. Griffin. The carry speed. Was there? Well, this is a, well, it's a vital clear, it's a vital clearance because Dwight York's in there with a goal scoring opportunity. This is York. It's been very lively since coming off. Now David Decker going for goal. Look at the bend on that. He scored some spectacular goals since coming into the United team in such dramatic fashion in recent years. There's been another one. Well, they're all, playing with, they're all playing with so much confidence now. Beckham's trying shots like that. We've seen Giggs coming balls coming to the edge of the box. He's trying volleys from 30 yards. 30 yards. And there's a lady there. I think they'll be quite pleased with her, with her future husband's uh, performance this afternoon. Victoria. Glass. Charging in 
to Neville, and it will be a goal kick. And it is incidentally where the bookmakers were offering 100 to 1 on Beckham Jr., Brooklyn, playing for England. <laughs> if it had been a it would have been 200 to 1. <laughs> and 150. Now Glass has got some pace. Maybe he can do something down that left side and stretch Gary Neville a little more. York his appetite for hard work. Robert Lee, now Griffin. This is Gary Speed. Eric rolling through the middle, to no avail. Sheringham, lead off to York. So much confidence about Manchester United. York making a nuisance of himself against Stoney, who carried it over the line. And a terrific performance from Manchester United, especially in the second half. And they have produced an exhilarating football. And Rude and its team really had no response for all the endeavour, the hard chasing of Alan Shearer. No foul, only a goal as a referee as Sharing went to ground. Griffin. Well, out there for him down this right side. There was Fergus up through the middle there. Barrett up with him. This is Barrett. It was a wonderful opportunity. And it's passed him by. Well, they're not going to get a better opportunity than that. Those supporters know it. Maybe that was the chance that might have brought them back into the game. It's a delightful piece of skill to create the opportunity for himself there. The ball, the ball opens up and he slides it wide. And I think with that shot that goes wide here, goes the chance of Newcastle actually getting back into this game at all. Jordy's on their feet in expectation. But it wasn't to be. The Croatian Sergio Maric, who could have crowned his windy appearance here, his first, of course, with a goal. have given them a glimmer of hope. And he can play this fellow. No doubt he has an outstanding talent. And he hasn't really produced it as yet for Newcastle. But he would have made such a name for himself then had he scored. Brought them back into this match. Last with the cross. Here at full stretch. Ball here to Griffin. Now Lee, bending his cross in. Stam is there, towering, commanding figure at the back. As he has been throughout the season, once he's settled. Found it hard going, I'm sure. The stamina setting conditions, the heat of Wembley, and the scorching heat of United's performance. Dwight York, Neville, now Beckham. I think it felt his team were playing in third gear until this final. Well, they certainly are out of notch or two, but it hasn't been enough. Step, posing himself on Ferguson. Now York, get good movement from Manchester United. Beckham, Solskjaer. This is Neville. No question about it, they have beaten the better team. Manchester United, they've got a free kick here. And he's sort on Ryan Giggs as we head into the last five minutes. Five have passed from a final that Manchester United have dominated. All the committed approach of Newcastle. This is Beckham now. There's yet to be more punishment. Possession. 
Ronnie Johnson. Jorgen Solskjaer wait in the middle. Showing him again, tugging the strings. This time without effect. Goes Stan. Ferguson to speed. Andy Griffith. She was up front, so is Ferguson here. Not good feet for a big man. Duncan Ferguson as well as his strength in the air. And with Kenneth at Newcastle, he was on the ground almost. York, the expected through. Barely sharing it. Walks in the middle, so is Giggs. Oh, Giggs might yet get a chance. I think he loses concentration then, shall they? Well, I think Chavez feeling you know, the uh, strains of this game now. No real match practice thrown into this game. And certainly in this last of the 20 minutes, I think he's found the going very, very hard. It was top class defending that by Neville. Who could tell the threat of Alan Shearer. Shearer visibly feeling the strain of it all. Hasn't been the flop of last year, but they are second best today. Once again, the verbals here from Ferguson. Tucking shirts for David May. The referee signing for the Manchester United man. Bizas with the back header. Manchester United voices ringing out throughout Wembley. And of course, a big great support too for Newcastle. Maybe a little subdued at the moment. I think they know victory is beyond their team now. I know where they've got behind them. Sheringham. United on a roll again. Solskjaer. Could be through. Good tackle. Beautiful time there from Xavi. Maric. A fine first touch. If only he could have found the net with that shaft that came his way. Who knows? He might have had a grand stat finish. He might have got a man down into it. Behind the goal, where you are there. The time it's Lee. I think it's just Solskjaer, and I think it's Trump Crap all in the injury, so that's, uh, that's a bit of, bit of good news for Alex Ferguson. Speed. How many yet find at least a consolation goal, Newcastle? Griffin. Griffin, right across the face of goal too. 
don't think Schmeichel got his fingers to it. Newcastle felt he did. And he's had a change of heart, the referee. He has to at the corner. Well, David May and Peter Schmeichel certainly thought the game was over then. They were hugging each other, but it was a good save from Schmeichel. Not called upon here, though. Now he might be. Such a dominant force at the back again today, Michael. They haven't needed it that often, Manchester United. And when he has been called on, he's been more than capable of repelling Newcastle. David May, right to Solskjaer. He's happy to play out time now, with Manchester United so close to the double. Particularly in the second half. Once the second goal went in, then it was a magnificent performance by uh, Manchester United. Just saw a nice moment on the pitch there. Finish Michael, who wore the captain's armband when Roy Keane went off. He went over to Roy Keane, took his armband off, and put it back onto Roy Keane's arm because he's the one who's going to go up and pick up that cup. But a tremendous performance, well deserved by United, and one which will give them fantastic confidence for what we all hope is a successful night on Wednesday in Barcelona. Four FA Cup final wins as a manager, but Alex Ferguson, no one has managed that before in the history of the English game. And many, many people will be wishing them well on Wednesday night. I think there has been a feeling that United have their detractors, people don't want them to win things around the country, but there was a poll in a national newspaper today and that 86% of those who voted do want them to win on Wednesday night. And we'll go there with our best wishes. Certainly a good heart after this terrific display today. Winners over Newcastle by two goals to nil. And our thanks to Peter Brackley and Ray Clements. The favourites triumph. Worldwide favourites in football terms these days. Mighty Manchester United simply continue to power ahead of most of the rest in English football. Newcastle United know, again, they have been a well-beaten second here. And Alan Shearer takes a walk that he dreads. The walk up the steps first in the FA Cup final, because if you do it first, it means you've lost. And that was something that Alan Shearer and Newcastle United did not bank on experiencing today. Just a quick word from Norman Whitesiders. 
Newcastle make their weary way, and they do look weary mentally and physically up the steps. Yes, I think it was men against boys, really, in the second half. Although, to be fair, when Duncan have came on at half-time, the first five minutes or so started something similar to the first half. Um, because Newcastle put the pressure on, put a few balls into the box, and then all of a sudden it turned again, and then either got a goal, and, and then after that it was just one way topic. Can they take any consolation from doing all the things that you said they had to do at half time, Norman? They had to make changes, they had to up the tempo, and for 10 minutes of the second half they were right in the game. Does that give them anything to look back on with pleasure tonight? Well, I think, no, I think at the end of the season, you've just lost the cup final, they're going to be bitterly disappointed. I mean, some of the boys have been down this road, like last year before, and they won't look forward to the... the I know they'll probably get a magnificent reception back in Newcastle tomorrow, um, because the fans are so great, but um, they'll be bitterly disappointed. They know their football in the northeast. they're going to look at their defending today, and know that that is not good enough at the top level. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, first half as well, there was a few openings, but second half, it was really... Too many mistakes, not enough quality, and United capitalised on that. I mean, one, one um, particular moment, I think, Ray said there was about a dozen passes, I thought there was probably more than that. Uh, they were just passing it around like a, a practice game, basically. And yet they have the most unbelievable support any other club would love to have it, and even now they stay. But what they will witness now is another great moment in this great club's history. Whether you love them or not, they are a great football club. They built a reputation on a history of triumph and disaster, overcoming setbacks, courage, great players, great people behind the scenes, and of course they too have great support. Roy Keane will lead the team up. Peter Schmeichel took the captain's armband off him when Keane went on. But Keane is the man smiling at the end of this week. Well, he's a strong lad, and it's just as well because he's going to have to win the world trophies. <laughs> there he goes. The FA Cup. You beauty, I think he said there. Uh, lovely moment. Well, unfortunately for Manchester United, that's the end of Roy's season. Um, so the boys will, you know, after a few things tonight, I'm sure they'll get their act together for the big one on Wednesday. It's a, it's a great moment for Peter Schmeichel to, to end his uh, Manchester United. Um, there's in England, you know, lifting the, the, the medal at Wembley, and what a way to finish. And he deserves every single, you know, trophy that he's won with United because his input over the years at that club is immense. There have been some obviously top goalkeepers. Is Schmeichel the all-time best Manchester United keeper? Yes, I'll have to go there. I mean, Harry Gray from Northern Ireland probably does yes. agree. <laughs> but I would, have to, I would have to say it to this night without a doubt. What a turnaround in the fortunes of Teddy Sheridan. Drummed out of the in the World Cup effort last summer. A big part player for a lot, large part of this campaign for Manchester United. Yet at the business end, he's a hero. Absolutely, I mean, the change of fortunes in football just go to show, don't they, Paul? I mean, Harry Sharon, I mean, he's getting a little bit of stick uh, by the Manchester United uh, supporters earlier on the season. And then it just looks like a substitute. Puts him one them in the lead. And like he say, he's an absolute hero today. We've seen great teams in the past. One thinks back to the Liverpool units of the of the 80s they had to constantly change faces update the system to keep the hunger for success Manchester United looked to be doing the same thing it's a continual change around Alex Bergson spent a lot of money last year the upstand nice to see him get a medal um, he got off to a tricky start himself and um, this season but then he showed his true class throughout and I think Fergie made some nice um, substitutes today substitutions and given other people you know a medal like you know, you have stuff coming on, getting the medal for the last 10 minutes, whatever it was. That's what they say. Now, by my reckoning, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong here, that is trophy number 17 of Alex Ferguson's Manchester United career. And he won one or two in Scotland as well. Yes, his record is absolutely... It's just, you know, it's got to be Sir Alex next, I think. <laughs> He's certainly right in the tradition of Matt Busby and the great names of Manchester United's past. He's written fresh pages of glory and Sir Bobby Charlton there alongside him. Fitting partners in this triumph again today for Manchester United. Effectively, as Newcastle bid their fans farewell and again the Newcastle fans have stayed to cheer their heroes out, even though yet again it has not been that day. Norman, 
that leaves the stage for Manchester United. The third, effectively the third team that Ferguson has built this decade to do the double. Three of them have done it now. There are those that say that maybe defensively this not, lot are not quite as good as some of the previous teams. But boy, can they entertain. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the teams that he has built, I think the wonderful thing that Alex Ferguson's had in his locker, that he brings in top quality internationals from Europe, but also keeps the youth policy going. And there's lots of home, you look at the homegrown players in that team today, plus some big money buys. He's got the resources for that, and they're reaping the rewards. And the most frightening thing of all is, as you mentioned, they're still all under the age of 25. And they're all on long-term contracts, because he's no fool. <laughs> That's nice to see Alex with a trophy. Sometimes managers take a back seat at this time of the day, um, cup finals. But that was nice to him. And he'll look after his staff as well. He likes them to get involved. Can they do it on Wednesday night and go where no English club has gone before? I would absolutely love to see them do it on Wednesday night. So my answer to that is a definite yes. Well, it would put them out on their own, because Liverpool in 1977 were close, but fell at the FA Cup final stage. In 1985, Everton couldn't quite complete a wonderful double, which involved the European trophy. And in 1994, remember, Manchester United did lose a game at Wembley that season. They lost in the League Cup final, even though it was one of three double years in this decade. Manchester United again have done the double, and now is their chance to go on to become immortal in English football history by clinching the treble involving.